Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's explore Spotlight in Unreal Engine. Right now, I've got the Doji model placed in the scene and there are no lights. So I'm going to create the Spotlight just from here. I'll go to the lights and then choose the Spotlight. And uh, I'll select the Spotlight and then start moving it like that. And you should be able to see this is uh, working like a, a torch light or a focus light, which is uh, clearly uh, focusing in one direction. Okay. Uh, to define spotlight it's a light which emits in uh, one single direction but again uh, it emits from a point and the the rays are they expand as go uh, farther from the light source forming a cone shape so uh, spotlights are used uh, in the place of as i told uh, torch lights or car headlights or any events if you see um, uh, on any stage events the lighting on the stages are basically spotlights by nature so um, the options are very pretty much same like any other light we have in unreal so to start with the spotlight has the transform node where you can able to select the light and move it okay so the move option is working for this light and if i rotate this light the lights uh, direction will also change uh, accordingly just giving that nice um, <coughs> effect of uh, you know moving lights and uh, if i just scale the light you may not see any effect because uh, we have control of that features in the light options we have the intensity section where the intensity is in candelas right now. The light intensity is 8 candelas. So if I scroll down and then change the light uh, units, okay, let me find it. Just here in the advanced section, you have intensity units to candelas. You can change it to unit less, which is basically a normal number, which uh, multiplies your light as you keep increasing that number. So you can change the units to candelas or lumens, which are light measuring units you have the color of the light which you can change it to anything else like as per your requirement and uh, you can also reset the color just by clicking this button to white alternatively you can use the uh, light of the color using temperature so we have the light of the color defined by temperature and the temperature is measured in kelvins here so the temperature right now is 6500 kelvins as i reduce this number the light becomes more warm okay so somewhere 1800 kelvins gives you a candle light uh, flame and when i increase this to almost 10000 it gives you the blue sky color so 6500 is basically a default white light of the natural light sources and we have this option here called uh, effect world which is going to switch off the light later you can connect it uh, with the light linking features so we have cast shadows which you can switch it off here and uh, i'm going to switch off the uh, use temperature option and then we have these two uh, specific uh, spotlight specific options one is uh, the inner cone angle and the outer cone angle so when i reduce the cone angle here you should be able to see the light spot uh, you know focuses on a very narrow region and then we have the inner cone angle which is the secondary uh, uh, there are two circles uh, forming because of the two cones there and you know um, when i'm increasing this uh, cone angle or keeping the cone angle of inner and outer equally the two cones are at the same place giving me the hard edged spotlight now if i increase the outer cone angle from the inner cone angle you start seeing a, a gradual fall off in the edges so from that point till this point the fall off happens and that gives you that soft lighting um, by precise control you have the source radius which can make the light bigger and also you have uh, the source length which you can make the light even lengthier again uh, this is uh, a spotlight so um, it doesn't really show much difference but let's see if i uh, rotate this any change is going to happen so i'm going to select the rotate tool and then rotate it um, as you could see there is no big difference here when i'm rotating it <coughs> so i'll be resetting that so you have all options which are very much related to um, depth map shadows uh, in which shadow resolution scale is something really important uh, which can actually scale up the shadow resolution again increasing the shadow resolution can uh, you know, put the render time slower shadow bias is like when the light is parallel to any polygon plane you get that bands effect then you can start playing with the shadow bias and shadow slope bias but uh, this can give some shadow artifacts be careful using that then we have a specific control on specularity so you can reduce and uh, uh, I'll be moving this light So you should be able to see uh, a specular highlight here. 
so the specular highlight is going to uh, be reduced while i you know increase or decrease the specular scale uh, we have uh, some options which are specific to material like cast translucent shadows and also we have uh, um, anything uh, we have transmission or transparent objects then maybe you can switch this on to give transparent shadows however this is uh, very specific when you want to use it if not avoid them again uh, it's all the, the control is given in um, safety of you know scene optimization so we have uh, IES light profile also here so for that you can go to the content drawer you have IES profiles loaded in your scene you can just go to import and then you can choose any of the IES profile here and then that IES profile will be loaded once that is loaded you can come here and then choose your IES profile and if I start moving this light and then rotate it parallel to the ground and then you should be able to see that uh, patterns forming on the uh, uh, you know surrounding wall which is parallel to this light so this uh, IES profiles add that more drama to your scene uh, again as I told it is very um, useful when it comes to um, giving that torch light effect or car light effect for your scene okay so keep exploring about this light if you've got any questions let me know